It is really nice to see you today. Today we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to go over some information about booking those South America itineraries and actually what the itinerary looks like, especially for our Antarctica group cruise we're going to do. We're going to talk about the Brightline train. If you're not familiar with Brightline, I'll tell you all about it and it's really important if you have ever considered going on a cruise there in Florida. We've also got to talk about a norovirus outbreak on a cruise ship. I think it's really important that we go over those when we hear about them. And uh, lots more updates. We are The Sun Princess. We're going to talk about the reserve dining room on board the Sun Princess, how things are going there, and how things are a little bit different than they are in the section of the dining room on the other princess ships that is reserved for those reserved guests. So we've got so much to talk about today, so let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Thursday, it is April 18th of 2024, and it happens to be Gordon and I's 38th wedding anniversary, so it's an extra special day around here. Uh, let's start at the very top, just talking briefly here about that norovirus outbreak on a cruise ship. So if uh, cruise lines are required that whenever there is an outbreak, a certain number of guests or crew members become ill on board a ship, they are required to report it to the CDC. And the CDC has um, let everyone know that Silver Seas on the Silver Nova is the name of the ship. They recently had an outbreak on a sailing that departed from Peru and it was right over the Easter holiday. They had an outbreak and 28 guests on board and one crew member um, came down with the norovirus. If you're not familiar with norovirus, the main symptoms are vomiting and diarrhea, so it's um, something that I hope you don't get. But along with that, um, I like to always help us all remember how important it is to wash our hands when we're on a cruise ship. I know that it is really easy to get complacent about that. You're busy having fun and then um, you want to eat your food or you're going to go in the buffet and um, um, touch all the utensils um, to serve you know yourself your food and um, so here's my reminder to you today make sure that you um, wash your hands often um, especially before you get your food and it's not a bad idea after you get your food to if you're with someone else um, have them you know hold down the fort there at the table while you wash your hands and then take turns um, norovirus is something that really can be mitigated by washing your hands and getting rid of those germs so just thought I would bring that up today and if you have anything else you would like to share about that in the comments please do would all love to hear from you on it now if you haven't subscribed to our channel today's the day will you please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and if you appreciate my updates would you please give this video a thumbs up we really appreciate your support so thank you very much now the South America itineraries when Princess um, announced that their South America and Antarctica itineraries were going to be available to book today, um, they said that um, on um, our 2025-2026 program goes on sale on April 18th for Princess Captain Circle members and they are available to the general public on April 25th. So this morning I got up and I was so excited um, to book a Gordon and Ice Cruise on that Antarctica trip and then to some of you have already told me that you want to go. I was going to book your cruises and so I got up early and it's not available. So I called Princess and the rep said oh it's at 8 o'clock Pacific time 8 a.m. So so I waited, I got Gordon and I booked, no problem, and then I started to book guests who are not elite, and I can't book any of them. And so I am hoping that tomorrow, usually Princess will give elite guests a day before everybody else, so I am really hopeful that tomorrow we'll be able to start booking the rest. A really important distinction that goes along with that is if you are trying to look at those itineraries and you are not on princess.com logged in as yourself being elite, you're not going to be able to see those itineraries. Because when I log in and I, as me, I can see the itineraries just fine. But if I am not logged in, you can't see them. So that's why I'm getting some messages of people saying they're not out there. But I do want to let you know what the itinerary, actual itinerary is for the group cruise that we're going to do so that you can have it in your mind. Another really important thing to know about it I'm just going to put this out there. Know that if the prices go down later, we can get those. But uh, according to availability, that's always really important. Um, 
but I booked Gordon and I today in an aft cabin. The reason that I chose aft is forward is the least expensive, but I don't want to be forward going to Antarctica because you never know how rough the seas are going to be. And last time we did it, we were mid forward and it was really just fine. But when in the seas were the, at their roughest, we went down to the piazza level, that main level and went aft and sat down and it made a world of difference. So just thought I would let you know that. So I booked an aft cabin and um, I left the insurance on for now and the transfers and um, I didn't include a package at this point and the total is just um, over $10,000. So that just gives you a ballpark, um, an aft balcony cabin. It's not a premium balcony, regular balcony. We are so excited to be able to go so excited. So if you're interested and you would like to know about that, you're welcome to send me an email at letsgotraveltips at gmail.com. All right, here's the itinerary, and I love how they're doing this. So on Sunday, February 25th, we board the ship there in Buenos Aires. But the really cool thing is, is we get an overnight there. And so that opens up the world to being able to do a more excursions uh, through Princess. It gives you kind of a home base that night. And if you do come with us on... Um, um, our group cruise or book another um, South America trip that goes round trip out of Buenos Aires through me. Um, I can help you like know which hotel to stay at, how the transportation works with the hotel there, just kind of everything since Gordon and I did that before. So there you are, you're on board the ship, you're having a wonderful time with your overnight and more excursions to see everything. And so you've got on the ship on Sunday, on Monday at 4 p.m. is when the ship is going to set sail from Buenos Aires. Such a beautiful sail away there. Such a a beautiful sail away and then right off you've got three sea days and on Friday January 30th you arrive in Point Arenas Chile so you go down the coast of South America and go up just a little bit there to get to Point Arenas Chile that is a tender port you are going to have to use a water shuttle there and it is um, you get there at 7 in the morning and you're there until 6 p.m. last time Gordon and I were in Point Arenas and I can share more information with you this another day but we did two excursions we did one in the morning that took us on a boat out to an island to see penguins. I'll talk to you more about that another day. And then we came back and did another tour that it was a little bit more of the town and some of their historical places there. It was really interesting and a really sweet tour. Um, so that's um, Friday, January 30th. On Saturday, January 31st, we're going to be in Ushuaia, Argentina, which is the southernmost tip there of South America. It is where you're going to be able to visit Tierra del Fuego National Park. Um, I'll talk to you about what we did there another time as well but we're there from noon until 8 p.m then you have a sea day and this is the sea day of going from Ushuaia and crossing the Drake Passage down to actually where you're going to arrive in Antarctica. You arrive in the Antarctica waters like where they consider the beginning of scenic cruising there at 11 a.m. on uh, Monday February 2nd and you stay there until um, 11 a.m. on Thursday, February 5th. And so you've basically got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and part of Thursday. And let me tell you, when they say that they're out of um, cruising there in Antarctica, it is still beautiful for quite some time. I remember last time our last place was Deception Island. And as we pulled away, um, leaving in there behind us, um, there were still um, beautiful mountains that we still got to see and some beautiful scenery. So don't think you just go inside and quit looking out the window then. And then, um, so you've got the rest of that day and then you'll be crossing the Drake Pass um, the rest of the next day and you're going to arrive at the Falkland Islands there in Stanley. You get there at 7 in the morning. You've got there until 6 30 p.m. that night. Um, like I said I'll share with you what we did there um, last time another time and then you've got Sunday and Monday are sea days. Tuesday February 10th you have the day in Montevideo Uruguay and then um, on Monday, February 11th, you arrive back in Buenos Aires at 7 in the morning. Now, be aware that on the front of that, you can add a, cr a cruise tour if you want to, to be able to go to Iguazu Falls. And you end up with two days in Rio de Janeiro, two days at Iguazu Falls, and then an overnight in Buenos Aires. And then that next morning would be the day that you're going to board the ship. So if I'm, we're not doing that as a group because Gordon can't miss that much time of work and... Um, uh, so we're not going to do that, but if you want to do that, we can add it on the front and then you can join us for the rest, okay? Alrighty, um, a really quick note for you though, if you are someone that wants to see our um, 
South America. Princess has some really excellent itineraries this year. They've got, um, as they move the Sapphire Princess down, they have one that starts actually, um, it's a 53 um, day cruise. It's called Ultimate Antarctica and South America Adventure and you leave from Los Angeles and um, you end up picking up part of the cruise that um, starts in December that is an Antarctica cruise separate, similar to ours. So you actually hit Buenos Aires twice and so it's kind of fun. So you leave from Los Angeles, end up in Buenos Aires, pick up those people, and then um, carry on for the rest of that 53-day voyage. Um, the only challenge for me is it's over Christmas time. I think that's really, well, that and Gordon can't miss that much time work. But if we reti were retired, it would still be a really hard call for me to not want to be home at Christmas time. But it is, it, it's an amazing itinerary. And so the things, it starts there, it goes, um, you end up getting to visit um, ports in Mexico, you go down to Costa Rica, and then you come down all the way along. You go to Lima, Peru, um, Las Serena, Santiago, and just all the way down you get to see the Amalia Glacier there in Chile, the Chilean glaciers in those um, Chilean fjords are extraordinary. And uh, just it's kind of like Alaska, but it's um, even more so. It is just absolutely spectacular. Um, then you get to end up seeing all of the places um, all the way down the coast, including Ushuaia, go down to Antarctica, come back up and see places. So take a look at that itinerary if you're interested. If you need help with that, let me know because we haven't done that one, but I've done um, a lot of those ports and then we have been the Santiago de Buenos Aires. So I'm happy to help you with that if you need. We've also got a 36 day, they call Call it Andes and Cape Horn um, Grand Adventure. So there are a lot of places that you can see in South America from a cruise ship and it's marvelous. So I wanted to make you aware of that. And they also have a 16-day Cape Horn and Strait of Magellan cruise which is really um, wonderful if you don't want to do the scenic cruising down in Antarctica. That might be a really good option and it includes some other stops. So let me know if you've got any questions about that. But I thought it was really fun. I love looking at itineraries and sorting out uh, maybe where I want to go and at the whole thing. So I hope you enjoy that as much as I do. Let's talk for a minute about the Brightline train. Princess announced that they have a partnership with the Brightline train there in Florida. If you're not familiar with Brightline, it is a private company that is doing, it's not publicly funded, that is doing train lines to try to connect like airports and cruise port areas and just, um, and not even just completely cruise port areas, but just um, so you can go like Miami, um, you can go to Fort Lauderdale, up to Orlando, and they have just announced that they are doing Tampa as well. I don't know when that's going to be fully operational, but the game changer about it is the a number of options that it gives you about what airport you fly into to go on a cruise and the ease of getting there. So a lot of times, I know that a lot of different cities in the U.S., it's a little bit cheaper to fly into Orlando than it is to maybe Fort Lauderdale or Miami. You should look for where you live. But say it is um, quite a bit easier or inex more inexpensive to fly into Orlando or maybe you want to do Disney before or after your cruise or um, the Kennedy Space Center. Or you want to go to um, Cocoa Beach there. Uh, you want to do those things before or after your cruise. So the Brightline train actually goes from the Orlando airport. It goes down, um, it takes four hours to get from right there at the Orlando airport down to Miami. It's got two stops. They stop in West Palm and in Boca Raton. And those are not long stops. They just literally let people on and off the train. If that's your destination, you can go there. But it's four hours down to Miami. And then if you want to go to Fort Lauderdale, it's four hours and 20 minutes because they go to Miami first and then up to Fort Lauderdale. Lauderdale. And they've got several departures every day, northbound and southbound. Um, the least expensive tickets are $35. And they've got, um, so like your basic, and then they've got clear up to like a more um, premium experience there where they're going to give you some snacks and some drinks to drink and a little um, lounge area where you can sit on during the train ride. And um, the thing that Princess is doing with them is, um, th it's really cool. They've got some of their cars wrapped with the Princess logo logo on it right now. But the really convenient thing about it is, I think, a few things. One is when you get to there to the Orlando airport, you can leave your luggage in the station and Princess will take care of it and you will see it next on board the ship. When Princess first announced this um, partnership, 
they said that it was $35 per bag. I haven't seen that in the most recent um, literature that they've had out, but I really do think it's going to cost something. We'll see if it gets going really well, if maybe it won't cost so much. One thing that I think is really nice is that if you are in Orlando and you take the train down and you're going to hop on a, when a princess ship there in Fort Lauderdale, they are offering complimentary transfers from the uh, Brightline station there in Fort Lauderdale over to the cruise ship. And keep in mind, though, that with it taking four hours and 20 minutes to get from Orlando down to Fort Lauderdale, you need to plan on an early departure. And you can book your own tickets. I think it's GoBrightline.com. And if you want to look at Princess's partnership with them, I, it's GoBrightline.com um, forward slash princess and princess cruises forward slash bright line. You can look at it a couple of different ways, but um, you can buy your tickets. You get a little bit of a discount from now until um, May 4th. If you book a cruise with Princess, you're going to get an extra credit um, discount booking your tickets with Brightline if that's how you want to, to come down to the cruise port. So if you book your cruise with Princess by May 5th, you get up to $300 of credit per stateroom for a Brightline rail ticket. And um, if there's a promo code that goes with that. Or you can also, when you book your um, train ticket, um, you can get 15% off if you book a smart or premium rail and sell package through Brightline's website. So even if you aren't um, booking your cruise that soon, go ahead and book their rail and sale package and you'll get a 15% discount to, to go on that train with Princess. And so um, I think that's a real game changer and I think it's not just for cruisers, it's for anybody. If you're in Orlando and you want to go to Miami or Fort Lauderdale for something, you now have an easy way to get there. Um, it's easier than sitting in traffic. I have sat in the traffic before um, between those locations and it is much easier to just enjoy a nice train ride. Another quick update Update, I wanted to let you know about our love boat cruise. So our love boat cruise is going to be um, sailing on the beautiful Enchanted Princess from um, August 31st through September 7th. And a couple of quick updates here. Um, first of all, I get to keep my group space until April 24th. After April 24th, if there is extra, if there are cabins available on board the ship, I can book your cabin and put you in our group and off we all go together. Um, so just if you for sure, for sure, for sure want to go, let's get you booked so that um, you can come for sure. Okay, so let me know. Send me an email. Um, I am still anxiously awaiting Princess announcing those VIP Love Boat packages. I'm really excited. If you're new around here, the original cast from the Love Boat TV show is going to come. Um, Julie is the only known notable one that won't be there, but Doc and Isaac and Gopher and Vicky will all be on board. Those are their names on the TV show, but they're all going to come and Princess is going to have lots of activities and a VIP um, um, experience that you can book as well that we're excited to hear about and our Let's Go family is going to be on board and we're going to have a ball. So that's why it's a big deal to go on that cruise. And so it's round trip out of New York and we go to New England and um, up to Canada. And a couple of things that I want you to think about as you are looking at that is if you're already going to fly to New York, you might want to stay a little bit longer. And so two things that I want to make you aware of. If you want to do the same itinerary again, of course you can stay on the uh, Enchanted Princess and go see all of the ports again. Um, um, with it being round trip out of New York, we're going to go visit. Um, we get to stop in Newport, Rhode Island, Boston, Massachusetts, up to Portland, um, Maine. And then we go to St. John there to see the Bay of Fundy and up to Halifax, Canada. Those are the ports that we get to see. And then we have a sea day before we get back to New York. Another really amazing option um, to just getting on the plane and going home is Royal Caribbean has a sailing on Liberty of the Seas. And the itinerary is, is it leaves the same day that we get back into port on the Enchanted Princess. It just leaves out of the port there in Cape Liberty. And so it doesn't depart until 4 p.m. And then um, you've got a day, um, Sunday the 8th is a day of cruising. On Monday, you arrive by 10 a.m. there at Kingsworth in Bermuda. And then you stay overnight. You end up leaving on um, the night of Tuesday, September 10th. So you're there all day Monday, all day Tuesday, leave at night. Wednesday, you've got a sea day. And Thursday, you're back in um, Cape Liberty there in New Jersey. And it's very affordable. And so I'm putting this out there. If anybody else wants to do it, we've got Let's Go family members, just the nicest couple you're going to meet. Um, they are going to go ahead 
ahead and do that. And we thought it would be kind of fun. If anybody else wants to do it, I can turn it into a group so that you get some extra onboard credit. If you're going to, if we can get um, a few of you to go, Royal Caribbean um, has a requirement about that. But we can easily do that. So send me an email if you think you would want to be interested in doing that. And we can put it together. Okay, Gordon and I aren't able to go on that. We have to come back home. But um, that's a good option for those of you that are thinking about it. Alrighty, that reserved dining room on the Sun Princess. So if you are new here um, to Princess and everything, um, I just want to say a it's been a few years now. Princess introduced the reserve class. They have reserve class mini suites on their ships. And if you are in that reserve class mini suite, you have some perks. One of them is dining in the reserve section of the main dining room. Of the, of the ships have three main dining rooms, and one of them, they set aside an area that is just for passengers in that reserve collection. And the lovely thing about it is when you are ready to eat, you just go there, and you don't have to wait. You are just seated. You can have the same table, enjoy your waiters. It's a lovely experience. I have not tried it yet, but everyone that has tells me once you do it, you're never going to want to go back. And so it's been such a special thing. Well, with the Sun Princess being a bigger ship and so remember she has more reserve um, collection guests on board than any princess ship we have had before. They have their own reserve collection dining room. It's called the reserve dining room. They also have the same thing for their suite guests. It's called the signature dining room and the idea is the same that you're supposed to be able to go when you're ready to dine. That You don't have to have a reservation. You don't have to wait in line. It's just a lovely experience. But as I am hearing from several people there are some different and it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Not at all. But I think it is always better to go armed with information and to know a little bit what to expect. So first of all, the Let's Go family members that have notified this, um, let me know about this. And I really appreciate it. Um, first of all, there are lines sometimes, and especially when everyone comes at the same time. Uh, the way this works is they really hope that everybody doesn't come to dinner at the same time. But sometimes they do. And so you can have lines when you do that. You can, you know, the I'll tell you, you can go ahead and go sit down in the bar, have a drink, wait for a minute. Um, but sometimes you do have to wait. Um, another thing that goes along with that is the Let's Go family member had experience of seeing that on some of the other ships that they have done it, that they have flexibility in moving some tables around. So if you have a group of 12 guests come in, they're all in. And it's really important to note, you have to be booked in the um, reserve collection in order to dine there. You can't invite someone else. You can't pay for someone else they need to be booked in that and so um, so you've got a group come in there's eight of them and they all want to sit together one time he saw a tabletop for 18 and the waiters moved you know the crew members moved everything around to accommodate that in the reserve dining room there on the Sun Princess apparently the tables are fastened to the floor so you can't move them around to accommodate whatever number of guests that you want. So keep that in mind. Another thing um, that is a little bit different there is that you're not going to always have the same table with the same um, waiter every evening. I'm sure you can ask for it. They'll do their best to accommodate you, but it's really going to depend on when you come to eat and when other people come to eat and how full and how busy they are. The biggest note I would say is what we always see on Princess is that the crew members are like bending over backwards to take good care of everyone during their dining experience in the reserve dining room as we see in all the dining rooms when we're on board but also as they're trying to accommodate guests when everyone does come at once um, they have said that they really try to go out of their way to accommodate and seat everyone for dining as quickly as they can and to make waiting a pleasant experience. And so if you have been on the Sun Princess lately and you've got any updates to share with me, I would love to hear from you. I am so excited to hear about that Love by Brito restaurant. I have seen pictures of the menu from Spellbound and a few pictures here and there um, on Facebook of the meals. So if anybody wants to share that with me, I would appreciate it. I am really careful. I don't use people's pictures that um, other people's photos. You have to give it to me um, to use it or it has to be mine. And so if any of you are on board and get to experience that, I would love um, to have photos of it. Um, it looks like things are going really well. It's, it's just really exciting to me. So if any of you are on board a ship, let us know how everything is going. I really appreciate you all being here with me. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.